you don't think it can happen to you. To the hit and run chase in California, a motorcycle rider witnessing a driver slam into several cars and then speeding away. It can happen to you within seconds, a blink of an eye. Tonight about the man suspected of killing a woman in a hit and run and his plan to evade justice. When you take your eyes off the road for just seconds, when you're driving your car, oh, yes, it can happen to you. See, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. When the sands of time will run out within your hourglass. New at 10, a hit and run caught on video, and now a teenager and his family are looking for the driver who took off. He was a victim of a distracted driver hitting the road while riding his motorcycle going 65 miles per hour. He nearly lost his life. Now on a crusade to help save lives and prevent someone else from becoming a victim, the creator of DistractedDriversBusted.com and now the host of this podcast, it's Howard Drescher. All right, welcome. Welcome to another show of DistractedDriversBusted.com, the podcast show. I am your host, Howard Drescher, the creator of DistractedDriversBusted.com, and of course, now this podcast show. You can follow me on Twitter at DistractedDBTV, at DistractedDBTV, and of course, on Facebook, it's DistractedDB. And of course, if you want to get the shows on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and Google Podcast, just type in the keyword DistractedDB. And you can get all that information. You can go to iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, as I said. Uh, we're looking into trying to vamp into some other uh, outlets out there that will take us and everything like that. And I appreciate everybody who's been listening to us on these different platforms. We're trying to reach out to more and more each and every week. And if we can do that, hey, we're doing our job. We're doing, go- we're doing good. At least if we can help save some people's lives. Unfortunately. Not everybody in America or around the world listens to this podcast show as much as I would like like it to be heard everywhere. It should be on everybody's uh, iPhones, uh, you know, their uh, Androids or whatever kind of phones they got or listening devices, uh, whether it be the uh, laptops or Apple devices. As long as somebody's listening to the shows, we're still going to continue to do this. Because apparently some people are not getting the word, uh, unfortunately. But we're going to try to ensure that everybody gets the word. Because how would you like to be 20 years old or 23 years old knowing that on one night you decided to go on out and have a good time? And all you really, only thing you really had to do realistically is to contact a Lyft, an Uber, a cab, a friend, your parents, somebody to come and pick you up, and yet you don't. You think you're good enough. You're good enough to drive home. It doesn't matter. I've had a couple of beers. It's been a couple hours. I may have had some uh, different drinks along the way. I don't know the different kind of drinks out there that one would partake in a bar after having a couple of drinks, because I don't really drink a lot, if at all. But I got to tell you this. When you're 23 years old, you're young and dumb. Trust me. I was there. I was 23 at one time, and trust me, I thought I was invincible. There is nothing, nothing in the world that's going to stop me. Oh, but there is. There is things that can stop these people. Everybody has some kind of kryptonite that will take them down in some way, shape, or form. That's the bottom line. That's all there is to it. It's going to happen. If you do something stupid, there's consequences. And with these consequences, you got to pay the price. And with this, you destroy a family. And with the family that you destroy, think about this. You not only destroyed your family, you destroyed their family. And of course, you probably killed a victim or two, as in this first case. This story comes from Cleveland, W-E-W-S. And I appreciate them for allowing me to use sound. 
This to me is a heart wrenching story because this person is 23 years old and she thinks that she's invincible. But a woman here gets prison time for a DUI crash that killed two teenagers. Two teenagers were killed. Now, the thing that gets me the most about this is the fact that she was 23. She was driving 90 miles an hour plus with no lights on her car. Now think about this. When this kind of stuff happens, you not only destroy these families and that and there's two teens that you've killed, you destroy the family. The family loses too because they can never talk to their loved ones again. They can never do that. You, you'll be stuck in jail. And again, your family loses because they can't see you on the Christmas time. They can't see you on Thanksgiving Day. They can't see you ha on happy, you know, for your birthday. You can't see them on their birthdays. There's no 4th of July's for you. There's no Valentine's Day for you. There's nothing except a cold cell. And that's all it is. Again, this story comes from WEWS, and I appreciate them for allowing me to use the sound. And I don't think she really cares about the words, we forgive you. I think that she wants to be let off the hook. And I'm not ready to do that. First at five, she killed two teenagers while driving drunk, and today she had to hear from their families before learning her sentence. That driver involved in a deadly crash in Lakewood will spend at least 15 years in prison. Hello, everyone. I'm Delon Dillard. And I'm Courtney Guzman. Thanks for being with us at 5. Selena Colon was sentenced in front of her victims, family, and loved ones today. And News 5's Jay Jarvis takes us inside the courtroom. I was very wrong and I should not have made the decision to drive. 23-year-old Selena Colon was emotional Wednesday as she was sentenced to 15 to 18 years in prison for a deadly crash she caused back in February. Officials say she was drunk didn't have her headlights on and was driving at speeds more than 90 miles per hour when her car slammed into another, carrying 19-year-olds Alejandro Mercado and Max Close and their friend. Both Alejandro and Max died at the scene, the impact splitting their car in half. It felt like a nightmare that we're not able to wake up from. The words are still embedded in our heads like it was yesterday. Members of the Mercado and close families gave victims impact statements, pleading with the judge to hand Cologne the maximum penalty for her crimes, which is 25 years in prison. She said that she wishes she could go back and undo it. And that is infuriating because it was entirely within her control to not do it in the first place. This wasn't something that just happened. Prosecutors also read a statement from the surviving victim of the crash before Cologne and her brother addressed the court, asking for forgiveness. Over these months, she's been very depressed and dealing with this, and not once was it made about her or the time that she's going to serve. I'm just so sorry to everybody. You know what she did. But those sentiments did little to comfort both families as they mourned the loss of the two young men they say were caring, compassionate, and would never do anything to hurt anyone. Selena made a conscious decision to drink and drag. Irresponsible and reckless behavior like that needs to be deteriorated so that other families get spared unspeakable grief that our family and friends have endured and continue to endure. In Cleveland, Jay Jarvis, News 5. Again, News 5, W-E-W-S, and I appreciate them for allowing me to use the sound. Heart-wrenching. Heart-wrenching, isn't it? At 23, you threw your life away. If you spend 15 years in jail, you're 23, you'll be 38 if they take you to the max at 15. If they take you to 38 years, you'll be 41. Who will you? What will you do when you get out? What will you do to survive when you get out? It's sickening. It is sickening to the point where it is totally devastating. There's emptiness with the families. 
and they have a hard time. They have a hard time coping each and every day. They don't wake up to see their loved ones. You wake up and one day you may get out of jail if you don't do something stupid in jail. I think honestly they should serve their time in jail and when they come out they should actually do some kind of community service. Not just put out some PSAs there but actually go to school to school to school and explain to the teenagers that think they can live forever and nothing will ever ever happen to them explain to them the consequences and what happened to you when you did something stupid so maybe when they get to age 23 24 they won't do something stupid and there will be no more hit and runs duis good nights at the bar getting in your car, going down the road, and destroying somebody's family, and also your family as well. That's what I believe should happen. And I wish that some way I would be able to go ahead and speak to the judge and say, look, this is what needs to happen. This is the thing that should happen to ensure that this doesn't happen again. When we come back, special treat for you a real trial that was in progress you are listening to the distracteddrivers.com podcast we'll be right back ladies and gentlemen we have arrived in philadelphia local time is 305 p.m and the temperature is 67 degrees at this time you are now free to use your cellular devices You know that feeling when you get to turn your phone on after the plane lands? You can have that feeling every time you drive. Make sure your cell phone is stowed away whenever you are behind the wheel. Visit StopTextStopRex.org, a message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, and the Ad Council. Hey, it's me, your cell phone. We need to talk about something, something serious. I know you love me. I know you like using me wherever you are, but I feel like this isn't working out when you're driving. I know you may think that it's possible to focus both on me and the road, but I just don't feel the same way. I think we should spend time away from each other when you're driving. It's for the best. Visit StopTextStopRex.org, a message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, and the Ad Council. Honey! Are you ready to go to the party? We're late! Uh, What? Yeah, don't worry. I'll I'll be ready in five minutes, babe. Really? Can you get off the phone? I'm already ready. We're going to be late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry. I'm almost done. Uh, Let's go. Come on. Okay, honey. Let's go. Can you be ready next time? I feel like I'm always ragging on you to get ready for these types of parties. Isn't the man supposed to be waiting on the lady yeah, anyway? I'm, I'm sorry, babe. I, I know I say this all the time, but I, I promise. Next time, I really, 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 really promise next time I'll be ready and I'll be ready to go by the time you get home. Gosh. Uh, oh, uh, let me see who that is. I'm waiting to see if my friend is actually going to be at this no. party. No! Leave your phone alone. You know that scared me last time. You nearly hit someone walking in a crosswalk. What? No, you're crazy. Look, I told you don't tell me what to do. I got this. Stop the car. Stop it now. I... I just can't be with someone who doesn't care about my life, not to mention their own. Uh, Babe, wait, wait, come back. Uh, This... This isn't happening, is it? Now, back to the DistractedDrivers.com podcast. All right, let's just jump right back into it. This is DistractedDriversBusted.com, the podcast show. I am your host, Howard Drescher, the creator of DistractedDriversBusted.com, and, of course, this podcast show. You can follow me on Twitter at DistractedDBTV, at DistractedDBTV, Facebook, DistractedDB, and you can get the shows on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and Google Podcasts. Just type in a keyword, DistractedDB, and you can get this show along as 
as well as all my other archive shows. Okay, so the theme of this show this today is really DUIs and the devastation that the perpetrator does to really destroy not only their family, but the families of the victims, not to mention the person that they either, you know, killed, injured, uh, you know, left for dead in some cases, um, many cases to tell you the truth, uh, just basically letting them know that, look, this is not the kind of stuff that you need. This isn't the kind of life that you want to lead because just like in a previous story, you're going to hear in this story, it comes from Court TV, at Court TV, a hit and run murder trial. Okay, the state delivers an opening statement and I'm not sure, I really don't know too much about uh, Janet Hans. And um, she, I know, was accused of killing a police officer in a DUI traffic accident or DUI crash because it's preventable. So therefore, it would not fall under my category and many others as an accident because you had the ability to contact an Uber, a Lyft, or something like that. Now, this trial is just getting into opening arguments, so I'm going to go ahead and roll on this. this. Bear with me, guys. This is about six minutes long. Uh, the whole real thing, if you want to hear the entirety of it, you can go to uh, courttv.com, and you'll be able to just type in the word uh, Janet Hines, and you'll you'll be able to find the story. And here it is, again, from Court TV. My first time using Court TV. Court TV, thank you very much for allowing me to use the sound on my podcast show. And here we go. All Janet Hines had to do was get a ride home. All she had to do was say to herself, I've had a little too much to drink, and I shouldn't be driving. I shouldn't get, get behind the wheel of my car. She was at a restaurant called Farm to Florida the evening of February 23rd, 2019. She was there with family and friends. All she had to do was tell one of those individuals that she was there with, I've had too much to drink. I probably shouldn't be driving. But she didn't do that. She is a 54-year-old grandmother and mother. And she should have known better. She should have known better. And she would have made a good decision that evening. And we wouldn't be here. Nicholas Gallinger, the police officer that she ran over and killed, would be here protecting this community. If she had thought to herself, I have a duty to the people of Chattanooga, Tennessee, to the community, to make sure that I'm a safe driver, that I'm a sober driver, then none of this would have happened. She made several bad decisions that day. Why? Why such an, exper an experienced person? She's not an adolescent. She's not a kid. She made those decisions because she was impaired. Because she had been drinking. Officer Gallagher, he was a 38-year-old police officer. He was a rookie police officer. He had been uh, with, the, uh, with the Chattanooga Police Department for about six weeks. He had graduated from the Chattanooga Police Department training academy. <laughs> And for his first six weeks, uh, he was a probate, which you call a probation officer. He was uh, under the supervision of a field training officer. He had been with his, with the field training officer he, he was with on February 23rd, 2019. He had been with that field training officer, Jared Justice, for about three to four weeks. weeks. They would ride together and go to calls and do things of that nature. Uh, they, uh, they both started their shift at around 10 p.m. that evening. That was, a, that was a Saturday, February 23, 2019. Uh, they were dispatched to a check hazard on Hamill Road, the 2900 block of Hamill Road. Uh, what happened 
what happens with quite frequency there on the Hamilton is the rainwater comes up from a manhole and it just displaces the manhole cover. They were dispatched out there to check that hazard. A barricade had been placed over the manhole cover and a sign had been put on the barricade. That sign had come off. So they went there to check out this uh, barricade. They arrived there a little after 11 o'clock that evening. About the time that they were starting their shift, Jared Justice and Officer Gavinger, Ms. Hines, as I stated before, was winding up a night out with family and friends at the farm before. They had gone there to see a band. Her, her daughter-in-law was there, her son was there, Melissa Hines, Jared Hines, and the other members of, of other people that she knew were there. Um, she arrived there around 6.40 p.m. She had driven alone. She had driven her wife on the CLV. It was an SUV. She arrived there around 6.40. And shortly thereafter, she began to consume alcohol. She had her first drink at 7.09 p.m. It was a 20-ounce blue moon. She drank that drink from 7.09 to 8.13 p.m. Her second drink, again, was a 20-ounce blue moon. She consumed that drink from 8.15 to 8.57 p.m. Her third drink was a lemon drop shot. It's uh, it's an ounce and a half of vodka with other flavors in a drink. She consumed that at 9.07 p.m. Her fourth drink was a 16-ounce Michelob Ultra. She consumed that from 9.15 to 10.08. And then her final and fifth drink was a 16-ounce Michelob Ultra. She consumed that in 18 minutes, from 10.11 to 10.29 p.m. She'd leave the premises shortly thereafter. She talked to uh, uh, some friends there in front of the floor. She left the premises. She got into her car, and then she drove. She drove home. It's not a 30-minute drive. On her way home, Nicholas Gallagher and the defendant's pass would cross. And this is what happened. Could you get the lights on? And again, that story came from Court TV, and I appreciate them for allowing me to use time. Now, I used about six, seven minutes of the court trial itself in the opening statements of Janet Hahn, 64 years old. And did you hear how many drinks she had along the way and the time that she had between each drink and how long it took her to drink each one of those drinks? Yeah, that would be a lot. And then she just gets into her car and then a total disaster ends up happening. She ends up killing an officer. And the officer's only been on duty. He only had his jet, his, his badge and he's only had his job for about six weeks. Six freaking weeks. Oh my goodness, people. Okay, here's another story. We're not going to have time to go to a commercial break. Here's a quick story. 
from uh, CBS LA, and I appreciate them for allowing me to use the sound. But again, a DUI driver, suspected of DUI, I should say, was in a deadly crash in the North Hollywood. Okay, they arrested him. Uh, so hopefully they take it to the max on this guy. And here's the story again from CBS LA, and I appreciate them for allowing me to use them. A driver is in jail this morning, accused of causing a deadly crash in the San Fernando Valley. It happened in North Hollywood on Sherman Way, west of Ethel Avenue, and that's where KCAL 9's Joy Benedict is live. Joy, so hard to understand why people drink or are intoxicated when they get behind the wheel. Yeah, it's just very hard to comprehend when things like this happen. But yet again, it did happen, and it happened last night. And unfortunately, this car accident, we are told, left one person dead and another person in jail. Two more were taken to the hospital. All of this took place here on Sherman Way behind me in North Hollywood. You can see the scene is clear now, but that was not the case a few hours ago. Take a look at this video as this crash happened just after 11 p.m. Um, last night. That's when investigators say that the forerunner, that SUV, was heading westbound here on Sherman Way when it attempted to turn left into the Denny's Diner parking lot. For whatever reason, a car traveling at a high rate of speed, that pickup truck, we are told, ended up slamming into the passenger side of that SUV. As I mentioned, one person died. That person who died was in the back seat of that vehicle. There were two other people in the front seat. Both of them were taken to the hospital. And, of course, the driver of that pickup truck was eventually arrested for suspected of driving under the influence, and they are in custody. As for the person that died, we don't have a lot of information right now, as they are obviously waiting to um, notify next of Ken, but we are told that the person who died is a woman. She's believed to be in her 50s, and she was in the back seat of that vehicle. As for the two other individuals that were taken to the hospital, their conditions are unknown, but they are expected to be okay. But certainly, Amy, just very uh, uh, shattering and, and, and sad situation when you hear that, yes, one person has died in a car accident, and then when you hear it, maybe because someone was driving drunk, well, that just makes it even harder to understand. I'll say about you. It really does, Joy. Thank you. All right, again, that story came from CBS LA out here in Los Angeles, and I appreciate them for allowing me to use the sound. But here's a theme of the show, as I mentioned earlier today. It's all about the DUIs. Now that the people have been getting caught, and now that there has been death along the way, now that they're starting to face the court, and now the judge is starting to slap some cuffs on them, locking them up in jail for a long period of time, it, it doesn't make any sense, does it? Does it make any sense for anybody to go on out there and do exactly what they're doing? I'd say no. But the stats tell you differently. They're, they're getting caught. Look, Cleveland, Tennessee, L.A., it happens everywhere. That's where these three different stories came from. Tennessee, Cleveland, and Los Angeles. But it's happening each and every time more and more. And it's more and it's a lot more different states than what I've just named right now. I just named those three because of the fact that I had pulled stories from them for my show today. And to tell you the truth, I don't think I could be 23 years old drinking behind the wheel thinking I'm going to be invincible. And I don't think I'll be 64 years old like in the second story we did. And I don't think that I'll be driving around thinking that I'm going to make it the rest of my life drinking and driving and doing all that good stuff. I just can't see that happening. That's just me on the outside looking in. I don't know how uh, other people feel about it, but I do know that there's several people that are fed up with it and they're trying to do something about it. All right, you're listening to DistractedDriversBusted.com podcast show. Thanks for listening. Remember, I don't want to die today, do you? Don't let anyone take the sands of time within your own hourglass. It's just not worth it. You decide your own fate. And don't affect anybody else's. Until next show. Be safe.